Welcome to section 9.1b and 9.2. Okay, gentle people, during our last lecture, what we talked about was this exothermic reaction where we took methane, oxygen, and made CO2 and H2O. But more importantly, we had energy as a product. So what I want you guys to do is recall back what happened in Chem 1A. In Chem 1A, we talked about bond breaking and bond forming. So if I start out with my reactants of methane and oxygen, one way I can get to my products is I can break every single bond between methane and oxygen. Now remember, bond breaking costs me energy, or in other words, I have to put energy into the system. Now, once I've broken up all my things into atoms, so now I just have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygen atoms, I can form bonds. Now, when I form bonds, remember, I'm going to release energy. And so I finally get to my products. Now, what we can do is we can talk about the difference in potential energy. Now, potential energy is a state function. Remember, a state function only cares about the initial conditions and the final conditions. And so I don't care about the path that I took. I only care about the beginning and the end. And so what I can do is I can see the difference in energy between these two places, and that is going to be my change in potential energy. So in this example, we had an exothermic reaction, and in an exothermic reaction, what we see is my reactants have more potential energy than my products. And this is why I release energy into my surroundings. Now let's talk about the change in internal energy. Now I'm going to use delta E to represent the change in internal energy. The change in internal energy is going to be based off of Q plus W, where Q stands for heat and W stands for work. Now internal energy is the energy inside the system that is changed by either doing work or if heat is exchanged with its surrounding. What you guys will note is that I use a capital E for internal energy, and that's because internal energy is a state function. What you guys will notice is that things that are state functions use a capital letter as their abbreviation. What you guys will also note is that Q and W here were, were not capitalized. That is because heat and work are not state function. The last thing that I want to convey on the slide is that chemists take the point of view of the system. And what I mean by that is we are going to start using thermodynamic values. When I start using thermodynamic values, you'll see that thermodynamic values consist of a sign, a number, and a unit. So when I write these values down, each one of these tells me something. The numerical value and the unit tell you the magnitude of energy that is being exchanged. The sign tells you the direction in which that energy is flowing. Let's go ahead and say that I have my system and that energy is flowing out of my system. And so what you guys can think of is that I am going to lose internal energy as it flows out of my system. If I am losing energy and I'm taking the point of view of the system, well, that means my delta E is going to be less than zero, or in other words, it's going to be a negative number. And so this is what I want you guys to remember. If things are going out of the system or the system is losing something, then we are going to use a negative sign in front of our numerical values. On the other hand, if energy goes into my system, well, then what we will see is that my delta E is going to be greater than zero. Or in other words, when my system gains energy, I want to represent that as a positive numerical value. Now, I will warn you guys that engineers actually take the opposite approach. If you're in engineering classes, they take the point of view of the surroundings. So be careful in chemistry, we are going to take the point of view of our system. Now, with that said, let's do some quiz questions. 
All right, general people, in Chem 1B, you're going to get these hypothetical questions. So it's a good idea to sometimes write out a table and ask yourself what ifs. So in this question, we are interested in internal energy. And we know that internal energy is going to be heat plus work. Let's take each one of these scenarios and try to determine what kind of sign would go in front of each one of these numerical values. So for option A, this, it says that the system is gaining heat. If the system is gaining heat, that's going to be a positive value. What it also says is that the system is going to do work. If the system is doing work, then it has to expend energy to do that work. If the system is expending energy, or if the system is doing work, then work is going to be a negative sign. Now, if I add a positive and a negative, well, I don't know if I'm going to get a positive or negative out because I could have had this as plus 10 minus 5, or I could have had this reversed where I could have had plus 5 minus 10. So in this case, it depends on the magnitude of this plus and minus. So I can't always be going in one direction. Let's take a look at option B. In option B, what I'm doing is my system is losing heat. If it is losing heat, it's going to be a negative value. And now work is being done on the system. So if the system has work done on it, well, that means that something is working on it, something it is giving it energy. So this is going to be a positive value. And so again, I don't know which way this is going to go because I have it going in two different directions. Let's take a look at option C. I'm losing energy as heat, so that's going to be a negative sign. And this time my system is doing work, so that means it's going to be a negative sign. A negative plus a negative is always going to be a negative number. And the last scenario that I have is my system is gaining heat, so that's gonna be a positive. It is having work done on itself, and so that's gonna be a positive. And so that means I'm gonna get a positive because a positive plus a positive is always going to be positive. So in this case, the only option is D. This will always result in an increase in internal energy. So take a look at this. Which of the following has a positive sign for heat? So the option that you should have chosen was the first one. Here, the branch is giving up its heat to melt the snow. To get solid water into liquid water, well, that means I have to gain heat or I have to gain thermal energy. So this is the only one that does this. Okay, gentle people, what you'll notice now is your book is going to give you these simple theoretical machines. Now, these simple machines are here to illustrate some of the concepts that they want to convey. So here's the first machine that they're going to use. What it is, is they're going to have this cylinder. Inside the cylinder, they're going to have a gas, and this gas is going to be at a certain pressure. Now, on the top of this cylinder is going to be this piston. Now, this piston is allowed to move up and down. Now, the piston is going to form a gas tight seal, so it's not going to let the gas escape. Now, on the outside is going to be an external pressure. The external pressure can push down on the gas or the gas can push up against that external pressure. So let's go ahead and think about the first process that we can do with this machine. One process is I can expand the gas. If I'm expanding the gas, what that means is that the gas is pushing up. If the gas is doing the pushing, then the work is done by the gas. And so if that's the case, that means W is less than zero or W work is a negative number. But let's go ahead and see if we can derive an equation that explains the expansion of a gas. So let's start out with the equation for work. Work equals a force times a distance. In my little simple machine, the distance is represented by the change in height of the piston. It is the only thing moving up and down. Now, what we also know is that pressure equals a force times an area. 
Now I could rearrange this and say that pressure times area equals a force. I can go ahead and substitute this into my equation. So what I would get is that work equals the pressure times the area times the change in height. Now, if I were to take the area and times it by the height, well, this is the volume of a cylinder. And so this becomes pressure times delta V. Or in other words, my work is the pressure times the change in volume. Now, let's see if this makes sense or if I have to augment my equation. So what I wrote down is that work equals pressure times the change in volume. Now, if I were doing an expansion, what you guys would note is my change in volume is I'm going to something bigger and I'm starting from something smaller. That means delta volume is a positive number. Pressure is always positive. So a positive times a positive, well, that should give me a positive value but we've just established that work should be a negative number. So to make this equation work correctly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a negative sign inside my equation. This is the equation that goes ahead and describes how a change in volume results in work. So remember to have that negative sign. And one other thing that you should note is that the pressure is the external pressure. So it is the pressure on the outside of the cylinder, not the pressure of the gas. What you guys can do is you can verify that this equation works by doing the same thing and thinking about a compression. A compression is where I'm going to go ahead and use the piston to squeeze down on that gas. And you guys will see all my signs make sense. All right, gentle people, I'm going to close this lecture with this concept, and that is the concept of enthalpy. Enthalpy is going to be designated by H. It is going to equal the internal energy plus P times V, where P is the pressure of my system, V is the volume of my system, and E is the internal energy of the system. I want you guys to understand enthalpy is a made up concept. A bunch of scientists came together and said, we are going to need this concept of enthalpy and this is its definition. And so by definition, H equals E plus PV. One thing that I want you guys to note is that enthalpy and heat are two different things. Enthalpy is H, heat is Q. However, the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat if my pressure is constant. So I'm going to derive this equation for you. But before I derive this, what I want you to note is some notation. In thermodynamics, if I go ahead and use a subscript, that means I'm keeping that variable constant. So when I put QP like this, what I'm talking about is I want to know what the heat is when the pressure is constant. If I go QV, that is what is the heat when the volume is constant. So let's talk about the derivation for this idea right here. Now I'm going to go over a derivation with you guys. I don't expect you guys to know the derivation, but I want you guys to be able to follow along and understand the concepts I'm going to use. The most important thing is that you, you get the take home message, i.e. the formula at the end of the derivation and what those variables mean. So I'm going to start out with the definition of enthalpy that we just talked about. Now I'm interested in the change in enthalpy. Now the change in enthalpy is going to be the change in internal energy plus the change in either pressure or volume. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do this in constant pressure. So if that's the case, delta H P, so I'm at constant pressure, delta E P plus, now if pressure is constant, it's not changing. So I'm going to factor that out. And that means that only volume can be the thing that is changing. Now, if this is the case, what we will note is that my internal energy well, that's going to be Q 
plus W. But we already know that we're doing this under constant pressure. And so this is going to be plus delta PV. Now, what we also know is that we just derived an equation for work. So I have heat plus negative P delta V plus P delta V. So what I will note is negative PV and PV will cancel each other out. What I end up with is that enthalpy equals the heat at constant pressure. What you guys will note is that enthalpy uses a capital letter. That means it's a state function. And so what that also means is I really don't need to use subscripts here because the subscripts tells me what my path is doing. Am I doing a constant pressure thing or a constant volume? But if something's a state function, it doesn't matter. So that's why this becomes delta H, the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat at constant pressure. And I have to put the sub P here because heat is not a state function. Well, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.